Hello again, thanks for watching. My name is Joseph Catrona. This is another quick tips video from Go Engineer. Today's topic is creating a new file vault. So we have uh, a request here coming from our comments section on the Go Engineer YouTube channel. Can you show how to create a new file vault? Uh, so what we're going to do today is go ahead and walk through the steps that it takes to create a brand new vault from scratch. So this is assuming that you already have Enterprise PDM installed on the server, uh, SQL is in place, and the database server service is running, the archive server service is running, and I'm sitting at a client machine, any client uh, with access to SQL. Uh, DBO, D, uh, database owner access, or at least a password uh, that has database owner access. So what I'm going to do is open the administration tool. If you're not familiar with where that's at, you can do a quick search. All programs, enterprise PDM, administration. And now I am on the same machine here, so when I go through this process, I won't even be prompted for a SQL password, but if I were networking to the SQL machine uh, on a different machine, I would get a login for a, for a local admin password on that machine. At any rate, just make sure that you have a password for either the SQL machine or the SA password in SQL. Uh, so what we're going to do is right click on the computer name that we're connected to. So that's the archive that is previously connected. Create new vault is in the right click menu there. Next, we'll go ahead and name this one test vault. Now, one of the things I like to do is use an underscore because if you put spaces, SQL doesn't like spaces. So when you get to the database name that it's going to create, it'll throw this PDMWE in front of there. Uh, so if you minimize any spaces or sorry, uh, actually eliminate any spaces, when you get to the database portion, the name will be easier to find if you're ever digging through SQL Management Studio to find that database. Uh, so this next screen, after you give it a name and a description, is the vault root folder. This is where the actual raw files are going to be stored. Again, assuming you're already set up on EPDM, you can just accept the default here because it's saying basically, I'm going to go ahead and put it on this machine called Euclid, but be assured that's where all of your existing vaults are. So we'll just go ahead and say, yeah, put it in the same place. On my machine, I'm local to the SQL server. Uh, this is where you would type in the SQL server and that space is still there again because I threw it in the first time. So let me just back out, start that all over again. This time we'll do test underscore vault and accept the archive location. And then the database name doesn't have that PDMWE, which makes it a little easier to navigate in the database uh, tree inside of SQL. So uh, if I were typing in like PDM SQL Server 1 or something like that that I was going to need to navigate or network to, then next I would be prompted for a login to that machine. Uh, in my case, it's just local. Next, grab a language format, select a date format. Next again. Now this vault will have one user. His name is admin. This is where we specify what his password is going to be. We specify a default admin password for all newly created vaults during installation. If I'm okay with this new vault having that same password as the default, then I can leave that checked. If I wanted to specify a different administrator password for that newly created admin, then I would just type it in there. Uh, Self-explanatory. Next. Now, there's three configurations out of the box. The default is going to have everything in terms of cards, uh, the default workflow. Uh, actually, if I go ahead and click Next, we're going to see a listing of everything it contains. Bills and materials, data cards, search, ca search cards, and workflow is in there as well. Um, but if I just select empty, as you would assume, there's nothing going to be in there. That's, that's a great option if you've already configured the vault somewhere else, or if you're importing settings 
uh, you're, with this option, you're not going to have a lot of unused variables and unused data cards. Uh, so one of the things I like to do is go ahead and use the default and then go ahead and just specify. I want to add dispatch. I'm not interested in this. I'm not interested in that. Uh, and just kind of hand pick it. Now the tasks, the tasks such as uh, converting a file, that, that SolidWorks uh, add-in that allows us to spit out PDFs in the workflow or maybe print files, run the design checker as part of a task, well, we can add those in. They're not part of the default. So go ahead and click Next, Finish. And that's about it. Now if you're creating a brand new vault, it's probably going to be important to create a local view. This vault really doesn't do us any good until we can use it. So as soon as we see this task complete here, it's going to pop up a new vault under Euclid and we'll go ahead and create a local view from there. And once that process is finished, we get a completed message from the vault creation wizard. I'll close that out expand Euclid my computer here and see the new test vault. Now that's full of settings uh, that I can access from here and I can also right click create a local view from here and that'll run me through the local view wizard. Now uh, don't forget this is often more convenient as you're creating clients or at least distributing instructions for client creation. Uh, the clients can run a view setup from uh, inside of all programs as well. So just do a view setup and this wizard is a little more uh, gooey, uh, a little more graphic to go ahead and connect to any vaults that you're not uh, already connected to. So for the newly created vault we'll go ahead and say yes, attach, yes, put that vault uh, local view at C uh, for all users is really best practice there in, in case the machine were to be repurposed uh, later on and if I had selected only me then there's some some registry cleanup we would have to do to make this work for another user I'll go ahead and say yes and finish close that the local view has been created and now I can actually access via my C drive the newly created vault go ahead and log in and begin to use the vault. So thanks for your comment. Uh, please do feel free to leave a comment if uh, you're watching this and you any, have any videos you'd like to see, if you have any questions on this process, or if we can help with anything at all. Uh, this has been another Quick Tips video from Go Engineer, and thanks for watching.